Hi! In this video, we're going to prove the binomial theorem through induction. But before we start, we are going to prove a lemma that we're going to need in our proof about midway through. So let's go ahead and prove that first lemma. And this is a combinatorial, a combinatorial lemma um, that may not seem obvious by just looking at it, but we can show it's true by the definition of uh, n choose k. So what we want to show in this video or in this lemma is that if you have n things and you're going to choose r of them, that we can split it up into the sum of these two chooses. All right, so let's first remember what n choose r means. So n choose r, recall, is n factorial over n minus r factorial divided by r factorial. All right, so that is what n choose r means. This means that n minus 1 choose r minus 1 is n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 minus r minus 1 factorial times r minus 1 factorial. You can see that this the r minus 1 becomes your new r and your n minus 1 becomes your new n and you have exactly this formula up here. Likewise, n minus 1 choose r becomes n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 minus r factorial divided by r factorial. All right, so far this is our right-hand side that we're working with, and we're going to see if we can manipulate it to get our left-hand side, which we know is equal to this over here. So let's simplify this, these fractions somewhat. So the top, we're just going to leave it as is, n minus 1 factorial. And this n minus 1 minus r minus 1 becomes n, the minus 1 minus a minus 1 becomes a plus 1, so the 1s cancel. And I'm left with n minus r, so it's a factorial, factorial times r minus 1 factorial, plus n minus 1 factorial. We're not ready to do anything with this one. OK, we want to get a, uh, combine these fractions, but we don't have common denominators. So I'm going to s multiply this first fraction by r on top and bottom. And I'm going to multiply the second fraction by n minus r on top and bottom. All right, now, as we can see, I'm going to scroll this up a little bit. If we do that, the uh, first fraction becomes n minus 1 factorial, n minus r factorial, and r minus 1 factorial times r is just r factorial. All right, now over here, we still have n minus 1 factorial. Oops, so we also have an r up there, as we multiplied by that r. And we now have an n minus r up here. When we multiply n minus r times n minus r minus 1 factorial, what we really just get is n minus r factorial times r factorial. Now we see we have exactly the same denominators, so we can add our fractions. So we combine our numerators, and we can at the same time factor out an n minus 1 factorial. So n minus 1 factorial, r plus n minus r, all over n minus r factorial, r factorial. So if you need to pause and look at that, I just added these two numerators and factored out the common uh, factor of n minus 1 factorial. Now if I simplify this top, I see my r's cancel, and so I'm left with n minus 1 factorial times n, which is really just n factorial. So n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. And that was, and the, or this actually equals n choose r. So that's the identity, if you remember, we were trying to prove. All right, let's go back to, so just re recall this. I'm going to call upon it later in the proof when we might come back and look at it. Uh, but we're going to need it to prove our binomial theorem. So let's go back to the binomial theorem which states that x plus y to the n is equal to the summation of k equals 0 up to n, and choose k, x to the k times y to the n minus k. 
All right, we're going to do this by induction. So if you remember, our first case is the base case. So we're going to let n be equal to 1. And when that happens, our left-hand side becomes just x plus y to the 1. All right, so we need to show that the right-hand side is also just x plus y when n equals 1. So if you want to be formal about it. Okay, so the right-hand side says add up from k equals 0 up to n, but our n is 1. 1 choose k, x to the k, y to the 1 minus k, which becomes 1 choose 0, x to the 0, y to the 1 minus 0, plus 1 choose 1, x to the 1, y to the 1 minus 1. 1 choose 0 is just 1, x to the 0 is just 1, so I'm left with just y plus, and right here, as you see, that becomes y to the 0 or 1, that becomes 1, and we're left with x. So y plus x equals x plus y. In the case where n equals 1, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So our base case is satisfied. All right, so the next step is to assume for some uh, n, we'll say the statement is true, that is the binomial theorem for n minus 1. And what do I mean by that? We are making the assumption that uh, x plus y to the n minus 1 is in fact equal to the summation of k equals 0 up to n minus 1, n minus 1 choose k, x to the k, y to the n minus 1 minus k. All right, that is the binomial theorem above in a case when n is equal to n minus 1. All right, so we're assuming it's true for n minus 1, and based on that assumption, can we conclude that it is also true for n? Okay, so I'm going to write that kind of off here to the side. We need to show the statement, that is, the binomial theorem, is thus true for n. That is, if it's true for n minus 1, can we force it to also be true for n? All right. So let's start with the left-hand side. So x plus y to the n is really equal to x plus y times x plus y to the n minus 1. Right? That's just one more power of x plus y. Based on our inductive step, that was our assumption, what we really have is x plus y times, well, what did we assume to be true? that this x plus y to the n minus 1, this piece right here, is equal to the summation of k equals 0 up to n minus 1, n minus 1 choose k, x to the k, y to the n minus 1 minus k. All right? So we're going to do some algebra here. So bear with me. What we're going to do is we're going to distribute this factor to both the x and the y. All right? So what that gives us is x times this big summation, n minus 1 choose k, x to the k, y to the, I'm going to rewrite this as n minus k plus 1. Take a minute and convince yourself that that's the same thing. Plus y times that same summation, n minus 1 choose k, x to the k, y to the n minus k plus 1. And again, this is k equals 0 up to n minus 1 on both those summations. Oops, not going to infinity. All right, if I distribute this x, that becomes x to the k plus 1. And if I distribute this y, that becomes uh, y to the n minus k plus 1 plus 1, which what that actually is, is, let's write it over here, y to just the n minus k. Okay, 
this is where it gets a little tricky. So we're going to do a change of variable on the left, on the first fraction. We're going to say, we're going to let i be equal to k plus 1. Okay, now when i is equal to k, or when i is equal to k plus 1 and k is 0, this makes i equal to 1. When k is n minus 1, this implies i equals to n. All right, so in my first fraction, I get i equals 1 up to n. Now this part doesn't change. It's n minus 1 choose, well, if i is k plus 1, k is i minus 1, okay, and then this becomes x to the i, y to the n minus i. Great. Okay, on the second fraction, we're just going to replace, because we want the same variable, i to be equal to k. So we're just literally just going to change its name. Okay, so it doesn't really change here. It becomes the sum of i equals 0 up to n minus 1. n minus 1 choose i, x to the i, y to the n minus i. All right, now we want to be able to add these two together, but as you can see, we have different uh, summations. On one, i starting at 1, and the other starting at 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off the nth term on the first one. So when i is equal to n, look what happens. You get uh, n minus 1, choose n minus 1, x to the n, and y to the n minus n, right? Or literally just x to the n, all right? Plus, we only pulled off that nth term, so we're going to leave behind i equals 1 up to n minus 1, n minus 1, choose i minus 1, x to the i, y to the n minus i. So all we did was pulled off the nth term. Now, in this next fraction, like I switch colors there, I'm going to pull off the zeroth term. So I'm going to write that over here. So if I, if I equals 0, I get n minus 1 choose 0, x to the 0, y to the n minus 0. And that literally becomes just, oops, sorry about that. Uh, that becomes just y to the n. All right? And I'm left with the summation of i equals 1 up to n minus 1. See, all I did was pull off the zeroth term. n minus 1 choose i, x to the i, y to the n minus i. All right. Now, I'm going to combine these two inside summations that have the same summation. So we'll go back to our black. This becomes the summation of i equals 1 up to n minus 1. And don't forget you have the x to the n out here. Uh, n minus 1, choose i minus 1, x to the i, y to the n minus i, plus summation again, but we're all inside the same one, so I'm going to combine them. n minus uh, 1, choose i, x to the i, y to the n minus i. And then we have this floating y sub n out here. Now, this is where that limit comes into play. So these terms are the same. So really, I just need to add those together. And if you remember our lemma, let's go back and look at it. Uh, that's our n minus 1 choose r minus 1, but that could be n minus 1 choose i minus 1. n minus 1 choose i is just n choose i. So we realize this becomes the summation of just n choose i. x to the i, y to the n minus i. We have our plus y to the n, our plus x to the n. And remember, this is going from i equals 1 up to n minus 1. Well, we're going to shove back in the nth term, and we're going to shove back in the zeroth term. And what that's going to give us is i equals 0 up to n, n choose i, x to the i, y to the n minus i. 
And that... Let's go all the way back. 